Hitfilm Sensei here. Today in this video, we're going to launch a ship into hyperspace. So this is going to be sort of the Star Wars version of hyperspace. Today I am working in HitFilm Pro 2017, which is version 5, update number 8. And I am going to import the 3D model of X-Fighter from Andrew Kramer's Star Pack, uh, which is a free... Um, pack of models that you can download and I will leave a link in the description below. Here is the fighter and I'm going to actually call this X-Wing model and under materials I am going to open up and select a diffuse map that comes with the uh, star pack. If you download it you'll need the JPEG set and that will color it nicely and I'm going to go ahead and bring in the specular map and also the normal map uh, and I'm going to change this to cook torrents and pretty much leave it alone I'm not going to worry about all the groups and doing all the things but I do have a video on how to completely rig up and animate a uh, x-wing out of this uh, and I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well so I click Okay. All right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composite shot. So I click here on new composite shot and this composite shot is going to be six seconds long. Notice that I'm working in 1080p at 30 frames per second as well. That is important to know. I'm going to click okay and I'm going to take my x-wing and grab it from the media bin here and just drag it into my composite shot and there it is. Now what I want to do is, is I want to parent this X-Wing model to a master control point that is going to uh, control the movement of the X-Wing. So I'm going to click here at new layer. I would like to make a new point layer. And then this little icon is the layer dimensions. And I'm going to click on that and say make it a three-dimensional point. Because it's three-dimensional, uh, HitFilm cannot work with a three-dimensional layer unless it has a camera. So it's saying, do you want to add a camera? And of course, the answer is, yes, I do. Uh, I'm going to hit my F2 key on my PC and change the name of this point to X-Wing Control Point. And then under the X-Wing model itself, if I twirl open the properties under Models, X-Wing, I'm going to transform from that X-Wing control point. So now if I do anything to this X-Wing control point, it will affect the actual model itself. All right Under view, I'm going to tick this open and make two views. So I have a camera view here on my left and a top view or overhead view on the right. Using my mouse wheel, I can scroll in and out there. So I'm going to scroll out a little bit and you can see that my camera is sitting here as well. Okay. And again, if I were to transform the position properties of the, uh, then you can see that that's moving, although it's not moving there, but trust me, it is. I promise you. Okay. All right. What I want to do is, uh, is I want to move my camera to a place where it can or see what's going on, okay? So what I am starting with is zeroing out the position of the camera under the transform properties, okay? So now the camera's sitting literally right on top of the X-Wing. I'm going to turn off the X-Wing for just a second so you can see. And I'm going to create a camera control or a camera panning point. So I'm going to make a new layer, point layer, just like I did before, and I'm going to make it into a 3D point. And using my F2 key, I'm gonna call this camera pan control. All right, so that way I can pan the camera across using that. And the camera itself, I will parent to that camera pan control point. And I do that here under this drop down box, I parent it to the camera pan control. So now the camera pan control, I'm going to slide over a little bit to maybe about, um, yeah, you know, negative 1000. Okay. Also, let me go ahead and turn back on my X-Wing. Also, I want to raise it up about maybe 500 so that I can see. Okay. And then I will be able to sort of pan this around like this. Okay. However, 
uh, my camera itself, if I twirl that open, and I just tip down the camera's X control maybe 10 degrees or so, so that way when I do pan around, it will see that X-Wing fighter, okay? Eh, you know, I think maybe I want to come down just a little bit. Yeah, like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and keyframe the movement of the uh, X-Wing. What I want to do first is twirl open the X-Wing control point. And I'm just going to move this back in space, say, to about negative 3,000, okay? And then I am going to tick on this little circle, and that will create a keyframe. And the keyframe tells it, be here at this time in the timeline, okay? But if I were to come forward to the four-second mark and then start dragging this over, you can see that... A new keyframe has been set, and I want it to be at about, you know, maybe 1,500 by the time it gets to that four-second mark. So in between, it extrapolates that, and as the playhead moves, as it's playing, it will start to move, right? Now, about this point, I want the camera to start panning, so I am going to click on my camera pan point, uh, rotation Y, and just keyframe it, maybe making that a smooth keyframe by clicking here on this to convert that. Okay, and by the time we get to about here, I want it to have rotated around to about there, maybe? Uh, maybe a little bit further, just slightly though, not much, okay? And again, I'm gonna make that smooth so now the entire shot if i go ahead and go back to a single view and just show the camera uh it looks something like this where it sort of follows and boom yeah i think that's going to be perfect okay all right this little uh, icon here is the floor plane i'm going to go and turn that off so it's not uh you know um distracting us here so now that I've sort of set up the movement of the uh, of the X-Wing as it flies by us here, the camera follows it, and then boom. At the four-second mark is where it's really going to take off, okay? So right now we're sitting at four seconds. I'm going to twirl back open the X-Wing control point, which is where we're at, and I'm going to move forward about 10 frames. 10 frames in my project is about half a second because, or sorry, about a third of a second because that is... Uh, 30 frames per second. Okay, now if I was working in uh, 24 frames per second, then I would want it to be about eight frames that I would move forward or so, but I'm going to move forward to about the 410 mark. Okay, and now I am going to add a new keyframe, and this is going to be 111,000. So it's way out there. In fact, it's so far out there that it's gone. Okay, so you can see that the um, position point is there. And if I were to tick back, you can see that it is zooming out there very quickly. Boom, 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 boom. And by the time it reaches there, it is gone. And the camera can't even see it. Why is that? Because the camera clipping has been set to 100,000. Let me show you. If I right click on the camera and I say properties, you can see that the clipping distance is 100,000. And so anything that goes past 100,000 pixels cannot be seen by the camera anymore, okay? So I wanted to make sure that it went past the clipping distance of the camera, so that way you don't have to worry about you know cutting it short or trimming it off or something like that, okay? So there it is. Now, if I were to put motion blur on the uh, X-Wing by ticking right here, then, and then I did a RAM preview, it would look something like this. So that looks pretty good, but it just didn't quite seem to be exactly what I wanted. So what I did was I went to my good friend, Mike Miller, and I started having a conversation with him about this. He runs HitFilm University 
YouTube channel. And if you are into visual effects, especially using HitFilm, this is a channel that you need to be subscribed to and you need to watch those videos. So I will leave a link in the description below to his channel. But I was discussing it with him and he said, oh, you know, you there's a little secret trick that you need to do if you want to make this look right. And so I am going to share that little secret trick with you now. I'm going to turn off my motion blur and I'm going to go to my actually to a top view so that you can see what I am doing here. And here is the X-Wing and here's the X-Wing control point. You can see right now that the control point is sitting right in the middle of the X-Wing, okay? What I want to do though is, is I want to change the anchor position of this. And I'm going to slide this over so that the anchor point is sitting on the back edge of the X-Wing. That way, if I make any change, it will come this direction towards here. And I am going to make a change. What I am going to do is I'm going to keyframe the scale position. I'm going to back up two or maybe three frames, and I am going to keyframe the scale position by clicking on this little circle button. I'm going to then break the scale links, and then I'm going to move forward those three frames, and I'm going to stretch out the um, X-Wing to however wide or long I think it needs to be. And I'm going to go back to an active camera view so you can see how that looks if it stretches out, say, to, you know, that far, okay? So now what happens is, is that this is going to stretch and then fire, see? And that's what makes it look right, okay? So now if I turn on motion blur and add a RAM preview, it will look like this. And that looks really cool. So now all I have to do is add my window dressing. Light the scene by adding some light layers here and also adding a star's background, which I have done in previous tutorial. I will leave a link in the description below for that. And then when it's all said and done, you have this. All right, so pretty much in a nutshell, that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday and Monday, and thanks for your support.